The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Cheryl Jennison DeProza, and I'm speaking to you live from Shure Corporate Headquarters here in lovely Niles, Illinois. Today, I am joined by Gino Sigismondi, the Manager of System Support, and we have a special guest today, Eric Viveris, who is the Director of uh, the Wireless Category and Product Management here. And today, we're going to be discussing the rechargeable battery solutions for our wireless microphone systems. Um, we have lots of really interesting information. These batteries are pretty great, so I think you're going to like all the things that you hear today. Uh, but before we jump into the meat of today's webinar, um, just a few matters of housekeeping. This webinar, as they always are, is being recorded and will be archived at www.sure.com slash training. Uh, this webinar will be there as well as all the other webinars that we've done in the past. So if there's something you miss in this one or if you want to go back and catch up on one of the old ones, feel free to go there and listen to them. Uh, also, if you have any questions, there is a little pane in your upper right-hand corner of your screen. Feel free to type in any questions you have. Um, if you don't see that little box, there might be a little, little thing with an orange arrow. Just click on the orange arrow and that'll pull the box out and feel free to ask any questions. We will get to those at the end of the webinar. So without further ado, I'm going to pass this over to Gino. Gino, take it away. All right, Cheryl. Thanks a lot. And thanks to Eric for joining us today. Uh, this is uh, this is a pretty cool topic for us, especially um, on a personal note for me, because working on the support end of things for as many years as I've had here at Sure, uh, we've we've been getting requests for many years for rechargeable battery options for wireless microphones, and and before we had our own, we spent a fair amount of time researching ones that are out on the market and trying to find sort of off the shelf rechargeables that will. Uh, that will retrofit into our into our wireless uh, transmitters and as well as in ear monitor receivers, and uh, and it was always a bit of a frustrating thing to tackle because you'd run into things like you know some you know nickel metal hydride double A rechargeables that don't fit right because they're not sized the same as alkalines and just a matter of them really not being as reliable and not delivering the kind of runtime that people would expect out of alkalines. So, you know, we would try to help people as best we could, but. Um, there was never really a great option. Uh, so we went out and made our own, I guess, and, uh, and have really uh, um, made it actually a much more attractive solution. I'm sure uh, I'll jump right into the first slide here, which is, you know, the old picture, picture is worth a thousand words, right? I mean, how many of you have been faced with this situation? Just piles and piles of batteries waiting to go into a landfill, uh, last minute trips to the drugstore to get new batteries when you discover that, you know, there's none in your gig bag and uh, and, you, and the gig starts in 15 minutes, right? So this is a situation that uh, many people find themselves in and it just gets worse when you start getting into large conference centers, uh, colleges that have, you know, they might have literally hundreds of wireless microphones on campus being used on a daily basis and uh, and these alkaline normally alkaline, hopefully alkaline batteries, uh, are all going into a landfill somewhere. Not to mention it's economically, you know, um, a bit of a mess. So um, so people have been asking us for a number of years, not only, you know, what rechargeable solutions exist, but when is Sure going to come up with their own? Um, and we, we, we've finally done that. And, and Eric, maybe you can enlighten us a little bit on what, you know, how we finally decided to get into the rechargeable battery business. Sure, Gino. I think I think you hit on the main points. We wanted to be more uh, environmentally friendly. It was obviously bothering a lot of people here that um, our products caused people to throw away so many AA alkaline batteries. Um, <clears throat> we wanted to help uh, customers save cost. We wanted to lower the cost of ownership for our products, and rechargeable batteries seemed like a, a good way to go about doing that. Um, the third thing was the real trick, though. We actually wanted to make our products better. We wanted to make them perform better and make the whole process of using them simpler for people. And that's where we uh, really had to put a lot of, a lot of thought into crafting uh, the solutions that we've come up with. Um, we found pretty early on that, uh, you know, customers felt the same way. They, they wanted to be more environmentally friendly. They certainly wanted to save money, but they didn't want to have to do anything that was going to risk the quality of their show. And really the whole feature set that we uh, put into our rechargeable battery solutions is built around that. We actually want to make it um, uh, easier to put on a great show and to have more confidence about um, the wireless microphones during the course of an event or, or whatever, uh, whatever it is that, that in which you may be using the microphones. 
So let's talk about that for a minute. Cause I think when you talk about rechargeable batteries, everybody kind of gets that. Okay. Yes. It's, it's green. It's better for the environment. That's good. And, and of course it can save you money because you're not constantly in reinvesting in alkalines all the time. But I think there's some other things that kind of make our rechargeable solution a little bit unique versus the just going off the shelf uh, solutions like them being smart, for instance. Yeah. One of the uh, uh, things that we decided um, during the course of the development of our rechargeable batteries that was that they needed to provide better information to people. So we actually embedded circuitry into every cell um, that maintains information about the health and status of the battery. So that circuitry enables um, each transmitter to report the remaining runtime of its battery in hours and minutes, and that's accurate to within a 15 minute window. Um, this was a, this was a huge innovation um, because, you know, if you're running a, a typical traditional wireless microphone with alkaline batteries, you know, you see a few bars and then there's two bars and, and, you know, even though you can see that on the receiver side of things, you wonder, well, how much time is really left with these two bars? Has it been on two bars for a while or did it just switch? You know, do I need to run out there at the next break and swap the batteries out or am I okay? Well, this really takes the guesswork out of that. And, I, and I've seen that live. And, and, and that's one of the biggest things. When you're um, uh, running with the Sure rechargeable battery solution and you're doing a really critical event, um, being able to look over and see, okay, you know what, we've been running for a long time, but I still have two hours and 45 minutes on you know, each of these batteries, you know, you know, you don't have to run to the dressing room, for example, when there's a, an intermission, you can, you can let things go. And so it actually, you know, really kind of gives you peace of mind and, and lets you make good decisions about what tasks you need to perform during the management of an event. So that's, that can't be overstated. I, I've had so many people just tell me that, um, you know, once they've used our rechargeable battery system, whether it's an Axiant or ULXD, there's just no going back. Um, and that's one of the, that's one of the keys. The other thing that that circuitry does is uh, provide information about the health of the battery. So um, you can see in various ways on the transmitter itself, or um, uh, you know, over the network, uh, the health of the battery expressed as a percentage of the capacity of a brand new battery. Um, that's really a key metric for people because you know, one question that comes up is, well, how do I decide, you know, when I need to replace these batteries? Well, it depends how much how much runtime you need. And between the battery health and the remaining runtime in hours and minutes, there's really no guesswork. You can very uh, intelligently and very easily make the decision about when it's time to, to buy more. So to kind of put that into maybe numbers that might make, make it a little bit clearer, I think the way I often describe it to people is to use a round number. Let's say that a brand new battery gives you 10 hours of continuous runtime, right? That would be 100% health. And then if a battery, you use it for a little while, you know, however many cycles it takes to get it down to 90% health, that means that a fully charged battery would give you nine hours of continuous runtime instead of 10. That sounds yeah, about right. Yeah, that's so, exactly right. So even a battery that's only at 50% health still would give you five hours of runtime, which is long enough to get through most gigs or at least be a, maybe a spare battery you'd use in rehearsal or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. And it's up to you. And if five hours is enough runtime for you, given that you can see how much is left in hours and minutes, then you can keep using that battery. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah, that's, I know I can vouch for that runtime thing because that's, again, one of the questions we'd get a lot from people is, you know, well, when the red light comes on, how much time do I have left? And with an alkaline battery, you really you don't know. You know, if the red light comes on, change the battery. You know, you could have an hour left, but who knows? Whereas with this, if it says you have an hour, you have at least 45 minutes. Absolutely, yes. So, and let's see a couple other things there that uh, that I noticed it shows you too is the charge cycles, which kind of relates to the health statistic, right? Because that's based off of how many cycles the battery has on it. Um, actually, not exactly. The health is um, the, the more accurate measure. Um, uh, the percentage of that it states for the battery's health is... Um, uh, you know, again, the current maximum capacity relative to that of a new battery. Um, the cycles is kind of informative. You know, we found when we were developing this that a lot of people we talked to wanted to see the number of cycles they kind of expected to. And a, and a common question is, well, how many cycles is the battery good for? Um, you know, and the answer is, again, it depends. And, and you hit on it, Gino. It, it, it just depends on how much capacity you need. So the charge cycles is there kind of for information, but really the um, remaining runtime and the health um, kind of tell you all you need to know. Okay. 
So that's really important is the health statistic. That, yeah, that's absolutely. What we're looking at. Then, of course, charge time is just letting you know when the battery's in the charger, which this isn't a feature of all of the rechargeable solutions, but right. some of them will be able to show you how much time is left until the battery is fully charged, which can be useful in those critical scenarios. When absolutely. You're looking at it. Um, and let's talk a bit about the reliability of these batteries. Well, one of the first things that customers told us when we when we were looking into rechargeable batteries was that um, they didn't want to have to deal with um, you know complete cycling of batteries, meaning I have to completely discharge a battery all the way before I start to charge it, and then I have to charge it all the way to full. And with um, a lot of the off-the-shelf solutions like nickel cadmium and nickel metal hydride batteries, you actually have to do that every so often or else... Um, they can uh, suffer from what's called memory effect. Uh, memory effect is the reduction in a battery's capacity based on the uh, amount of runtime that it's tended to experience before it's been uh, fully charged. And there are some ways around that I th that I, I think I've seen um, some manufacturers use to make the reliability of nickel metal hydrides better. But by choosing the lithium, lithium ion chemistry, we, we really were able to kind of work around that. So uh, work around it completely. So all of the sure rechargeable batteries can be topped off uh, in the charger at any time, and you really don't have to worry about it at all. So if you know you run a show for a few hours and and you still have you know eight hours left on your battery, go ahead and put it in the charger. You don't have to worry about running it all the way down or, or anything of the sort. Um, it, it, the notion of having to completely cycle a battery sort of just goes away, and that was that was the. Uh, thing that really drove us to choose that lithium ion chemistry. And if it's a medical grade cell, I think that should make people feel pretty comfortable that this isn't a battery that's likely to just uh, to fail on you. So <laughs> yeah, both the cells and the uh, circuitry that's embedded in the battery are used in various types of medical equipment and the certification that the battery has to go through is, uh, is the same. Oh, wow. So that's awesome. Uh, and then another interesting benefit, which a lot of people may not think of, especially given how past rechargeables have performed, is that these actually can give you a longer runtime than you would get out of an alkaline. Yeah, that's true, Gino. And um, you see that most directly on uh, products such as ULXD, the PSM1000, and the PSM900, because those products can use our rechargeable batteries and can also run on double A's. And when you put the um, you know lithium-ion Sure battery pack into the transmitters, uh, when it's fully charged, you see, uh, you know, several hours more runtime than uh, you actually get if you're running with alkalines. That's great. Especially for those, you know, day long events or whatever, where the wireless is going to be on all day with a typical alkaline that might give you seven to eight hours on a fully charged battery. By the time you get to that end of the day, again, you're looking at that yeah. one bar or no bars and going, uh Oh, am I going to make it or not? So now, you know, so, and now with the introdu introduction of some of our newer wireless systems that use the rechargeables, there's pretty much a solution here for every possible wireless microphone user. Uh, I mean, musicians, the touring rental market, and the conferencing market as well. There's actually products that um, kind of cover all of these different types of users that allow you to have a rechargeable solution. You know, the first rechargeable battery we had, um, which we'll talk about in a, in, a, in a minute here, or in a couple of minutes, was for the Axiant system. So at the time, it was like, yeah, it sure has rechargeability if you're, you know, the top of the top tier of our users. But since that time, uh, you, utilizing a similar technology, if I'm correct, right, in, as in the Axiant battery, we've now made that available to, to everybody. Yeah, it's the exact same uh, technology that we brought to market with the Axiant system. Um, there's really no difference at all. We've taken that same solution and implemented it in different ways to suit uh, different products. And here are those different solutions. So here's the different Sure battery options that we have available. The SB900, pictured on the, on the far left, the SB902, and then the two different AXT batteries, which as the nomenclature would suggest, go for the, uh, with the Axiant uh, wireless system. Um, and you know we don't really expect you to remember all the battery model numbers. That's not really the important part. But to look at the different wireless systems here, I know that these are the systems that you would choose from Sure if you're interested in rechargeability. Uh, and that's a bit of an important point in that um, these batteries don't retrofit into legacy Sure wireless systems that weren't initially designed to work with them. That is, if you you know still hanging on to that old 
L series system from uh, 1994, um, we probably don't have a rechargeable solution for you. Um, but also, and by the same token, even some current products like like ULX or, or the UHFR system, uh, which are still great products, but again, they were designed a few years ago before we had rechargeable battery options. So if you're interested in rechargeability, um, you would want to be looking at one of these new systems here. Um, the most versatile out of all of them is the first one, the SB900, which works with uh, the ULXD, the UR5, which is a portable receiver that works on the UHFR platform, as well as the P10R and P9RA um, PSM systems. And then uh, the SB902, you can see, goes with the new GLXD digital wireless microphone system and, of course, the Axiant batteries. Uh, so let's kind of look at these each in turn. Um, we'll start with the SB900. Um, and again, the neat thing about all of the, the uh, transmitter and receivers in the case of PSM and UR5 systems is that these will work with either AA's or the SB900. So you kind of can... Uh, you can step into it uh, cautiously if you still are, are not, not quite willing to let the alkaline go just yet and want to have it as a, as a safety net. Again, you can do that with any of these systems. In fact, when you buy these systems off the shelf, they do not include the SB900. They ship with, uh, with this pair of AA alkalines, and then the SB900 can be added on uh, as an accessory with, uh, with any of these systems. And note that it's the same body uh, battery, whether it's a handheld or a body pack on the ULXD. Um, you know, at, at first glance, that may not look like a battery that would go inside a handheld, but it actually it actually does fit. Uh, on the ULXD systems, you do get um, greater than 12 hours of runtime on a fully charged SB900, and that compares to about 11 hours or so, I think, is what the spec is with AA batteries. Um, and as as Eric mentioned before. Uh, it's accurate that 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 battery life is displayed in hours and minutes and accurate to uh, within 15 minutes or so either direction and of course um, no memory effect like we like we talked about earlier. There are a couple different charging options because it makes sense if you've got a rechargeable battery you're going to need to know how to charge it. Um, one of which is uh, the way to get a lot of batteries charged is to use the uh, SBC 800, which is an eight bay charger. Uh, there's a spec in here that we hadn't talked about yet, which is how quickly these batteries charge. Uh, you can get them up to full charge in three hours and 50% charge in an hour. So remember on a battery that gives you 12 hours of continuous runtime, that means if you only can charge them for an hour, you can still use them for six hours, which again is going to cover a pretty large percentage of gigs. So even if you're stuck without a charged battery, you can get them charged quickly. Or again, any of the systems that use the SBC, uh, I'm sorry, the SB900 could also use double A's in an emergency. Uh, and this piece does fit in a standard size rack drawer. But kind of the cooler option uh, is uh, the ULX transmitters, as well as the uh, PSM receivers, uh, not the UR5, interestingly, out of the, these, but the ULXDs and the PSM receivers have external charging contacts on them, which allows you to charge the battery without even taking it out of the transmitter, um, which, is, uh, which is a pretty useful thing here. If you're going to do that, you would use the SBC200, which is a two-up charger. So uh, what you're looking at there on the slide is actually four of these things physically connected together, but when you buy one, you get, you know, um, a two up slot there. It's shown with a handheld and a body pack in there, but the slot is versatile. You can put in two body packs or two handhelds or one of each or just the battery directly. So you can take the battery out and it'll, it'll slot in there as well. And then using the, um, the, the supplied um, connecting screws, you can put up to four of these together and use one power supply to pull, to power up to four SBC 200s at one time. So that's eight transmitters charging all at once um, with a single power supply. And another kind of neat feature that we found too, uh, that I discovered is that when you, uh, if you put the transmitter in and you haven't turned it off, it automatically powers down when it's in the charger. And then when you pull it back out to use it, it turns back on and you're good to go. So kind of a neat thing there. Okay. So that's the SBC9, SB900, keep saying SBC, that's the chargers. And then the SB902 is uh, a newer battery, again, based on the same technology, but this works with the GLXD wireless system, which uh, maybe you'd, some of you might have been on that webinar from, I believe it was last month when we talked about the GLXD system, which is 
um, our newest digital wireless microphone system that has a lot of really cool features, which you can learn about in that webinar. But one of them is that it also offers, well, it requires a rechargeable solution. The GLXD uh, does not work with AA batteries. It works with the supplied SB902. So when you buy a GLXD system, you get a battery with it. Uh, in this case, the battery life is even better. Uh, you get greater than 16 hours of continuous runtime. Uh, with the SB902, that's when it's fully charged. And uh, I, I've seen them where we've stuck in a fully charged battery and it sometimes shows you 17 or 18 hours. I don't think we guarantee that necessarily. We're specking 16, but it sometimes is even better than that. Uh, and again, as you can see here, this is a close up snapshot of the GLXD4 receiver display. So you can see what that looks like when you're seeing your battery life there in hours and minutes, which again is much more useful than the old. Um, uh, and then the old bar, three bars, two bars, one bar. Uh, and there's also a, a, a quick charge uh, here uh, within, a, within an hour. No, sorry, I got that backwards. It's 15 minutes, it'll charge to? Uh, about an hour and a half to two hours, depending on how much capacity the battery has. Um, and really, that's actually not because there's any special quick charge functionality. It's actually just simply because the battery life is so high. So you mentioned before that um, with the SB900, it gets to a full charge in three hours and gets to a 50% charge in the first hour. Um, that's true for the SB902 as well. But because it starts out with over 16 hours of battery life when it's new, um, if you charge it for just 15 minutes, you can actually get two hours of runtime um, and you know easily get through the first set, if not the whole gig. Um, conservatively, we say that it can get to an hour and a half in 15 minutes because, of course, as the battery uh, starts to age and its capacity goes down over the years, um, it, it may work out to be more like that. But, um, yeah, the quick charge is, is great. And, and what that really means for people is, you, you know, you don't really have to remember to charge the thing. You know, if you're literally set up 15 minutes before the gig, you could pop the thing um, into the, the charger that's, you know, built right into the receiver, for example, and uh, be, be ready to go and, and, and have a great night and not have to worry about it. So Eric kind of uh, let the cat out of the bag on the next slide here, which is how do you charge the thing? And as you can see, uh, right on the, on the slide there, that little um, sort of doghouse looking shape, I guess, on the right hand side of the GLXD4 receiver is a charge slot. So um, if you're wondering, how do I charge this battery? It just pops right in the receiver there to charge it up. Uh, and there's a couple of other charging options uh, as well for the GLXD system. Um, I don't know if you want to give a little more detail about that. Sure. Well, the GLXD transmitters have a micro USB port on them. Uh, the body pack has one. The handheld has one. And you can actually use that slot to charge um, the battery in the transmitter. Hmm. So uh, we make a car charger accessory um, that you can use. Charge the battery in the car on the way to the gig. Absolutely. Cool. Um, and we also, any old... Uh, USB cable that has a micro USB on one end can plug into any USB power source. And so uh, you could plug your transmitter into your computer's USB jack? You could. It'll charge a little bit slower through uh, a, a regular USB source, but it'll work just fine. Hmm. So, um, you know, you probably have some of those laying around uh, somewhere already, uh, you know, wall plugs or cables or things like that. So there's there's lots of ways to charge it. So standard USB charging accessories would, would work with this then? Absolutely, yes. That's great. And um, out of all the different options we have, the SB902 is also the most affordable of the batteries. So investing in a backup, if you wanted to, is is probably well within reason. And you, you said something the other day when we were talking about this, which is that, you know, the, the, the runtime is so long on these batteries that you probably don't need to have a backup. But if you don't ever even want to think about batteries again, just buy one battery to have as a charge, fully charged backup. You can even charge one in the receiver while you're playing and you would never even, I mean, it just, you don't, like you say, you don't have to think yeah. about batteries. Yeah. Th yeah, that's true. I mean, it, I think it's worth, um, you know, pointing out that the GLXD system comes with the rechargeable battery. It doesn't run on double A's, which you, you know, like you said. Um, so you, you get everything that you need in the box and you don't have that expense of having to buy, buy double A's. So when you buy the GLXD system, you never have to buy double A's uh, for it, which is fantastic. Um, if you have any concerns at all, even, you know, even the 15 minute charge time to get you, you know, through the gig is it still uh, of, of some concern to you, or if you're just playing constantly or singing constantly and using the system all the time, if you buy a spare battery, which we make available, 
then then exactly like you said, you never even have to think about batteries again. You can have one in the charge slot, one in use in the transmitter, and at some point within the 16 hours, you'll get a chance to, um, you know, swap them over, and and uh, you know, one will always be uh, be more charged than the one you're using. So that's that's a great way to go. And actually, that um, paradigm comes straight from the Axiom system. Um, actually, if you look at the picture of the receiver on, on the screen, um, the slot there on the uh, on the receiver that's actually almost exactly the same as the um, charging mechanism for the Axiom handheld battery. And with the Axiom transmitters, we ship two batteries with every transmitter, and it's for exactly that reason. You can charge one while you're using one. You have all that you know accurate information about the uh, remaining runtime and charge status and health of the batteries, and you can just make the swap. Um, whenever is convenient. So, um, you know, the most high, high end system that we make that's used on the biggest events in the world, um, the exact same way of managing your batteries we've brought, you know, to the really affordable price point of the GLXD system. And, and we're really excited about that. Yeah, I am. Anyway. That's great. And that, cause that, well, it's, it's to the point where I think people start to expect those sorts of things. Like I remember talking about Axiom when it first came out and you know, some people would look and say, oh, that, that, that's really great. I can't wait till some of that technology starts trickling down into other products. And, and GLXD is in more ways than even just the battery, kind of almost a realization of that hope. So yeah, that's great. Um, and I love all the different charging options too. The fact that you can charge it in your car. That's just, uh, that's, that's a pretty neat thing. I hope, I hope, uh, you know, when people are looking at the, the system, obviously it's all about audio quality and all kinds of stuff that we're not going to you know, talk about in this webinar, but the, the fact that you really don't have that cost of ownership um, when you buy a GLXD, that's that's really important for people as opposed to, you know, buying double A after double A after double A, um, you know, that can really add up. So. And, and that's something that uh, we get asked a lot. Uh, maybe this is a good time to sort of address it at least quickly, which is, you know, people sometimes want to know, well, how much money will this save me? And it it's, you can't really put an accurate number on that. Um, because it depends on how often you use it um, and how long, how many batteries do you run through? Do you buy your batteries in bulk or do you buy them, you know, again, at the drugstore, which is typically right. your most expensive option. But um, for a kind of, you know, do-it-yourself calculation, if you buy your batteries in bulk, you know, at the, at the warehouse or whatever, the, the warehouse store, um, you're probably paying at least a buck a battery. So that's $2 in batteries for a system that uses two double A's like most of them do. Um, so you can figure that out and then look at how many batteries do you go through? Do you go through one set a week? Do you go through one set a day? Add that up and then just compare that to the cost of one of our batteries. And, you know, again, depending on how you're using it, typically within somewhere between one to three years, you've definitely made your money back, if not already ahead of the game. Yeah, and in the case of GLXD, it comes with it. So, well, exactly. You don't really have much choice <laughs> right. with GLXD. But if you were considering a system that didn't offer a rechargeable option mm -hmm. or, or offer rechargeability at all. Okay, so here's the Axiom batteries. Um, again, we we won't spend too much time on these, but the, they're significant. And again, that the Axiom system was the first sure system to offer rechargeability. In fact, it's not really an option. It, they pretty much uh, were designed to work on these lithium-ion rechargeable batteries. Um, the thing of, that makes Axiom a little bit different than the other two is that it's actually a different battery, a different form factor, whether you're using a handheld or a body pack system, unlike the uh, the SB902 and the SB900, which are interchangeable, can be used in handhelds or a body pack. There's a specific battery um, that goes with the Axiom systems here. You'll notice that the runtime seems um, somewhat less than the other batteries, and a lot of that has to do with what the Axiom transmitters are being asked to do. They're uh, fairly uh, power hungry devices because there's actually two, a lot of two-way communication going on there um, and high power modes and frequency diversity modes and all these other things that put more demand on the battery. In fact, Eric, I think it might be fair to say that that's was maybe one of the impetus behind getting into the rechargeable game too is that AA alkalines just weren't going to cut it with Axiom. Yeah, with the the level of performance and features in the Axiom system, it's not really feasible to run it using AA's. We do make... Um, a sled for the body pack that takes three double A's that can run the the body pack in a in an absolute emergency if if for some reason you you feel like you would need that, um, but it, it makes the body pack bigger because uh, it's larger than the the rechargeable battery. And with the handheld, we do have a um, a sled that can take a single lithium primary double A and can kind of in an emergency make the thing run for a little while. 
but really Axiant was designed to be used with the, the rechargeable batteries that, that you see here. And as I mentioned earlier, each transmitter actually comes with two uh, rechargeable batteries. So one to be, um, you know, put in the charger and one, one to be used. And then, you know, it, it doesn't really matter what happens from there. You'll always have a battery that has more, uh, uh, you know, has adequate charge at any given, at any given time. And, you know, it's, it's great. I mean, we, it, it's hard to believe we've actually been, um, shipping the, the Axiant system for over a year and a half now. And, um, it's, it's been going great. Like I said earlier, once you use a system like this and you realize how much simpler, um, using wireless can be when you're not worrying about, um, double A batteries or think or nine volts or things like that, you know, I can't tell you how many people have told me, well, there's just no going back now. Um, you get used to seeing the hours and minutes, you get used to the, uh, you know, convenience of not having to throw things out and buy, buy, you know, new batteries all the time. And, um, it just becomes a great way to work and, and lets you focus on more interesting and more important things like, you know, great audio and a great performance. And it probably is fair to say that in some ways, the Axiant level of customer was probably the one that would be the most reticent about a rechargeable battery in terms of, you know, money's not really an object, so they probably don't care how much they're spending on whatever battery it happens to be, whether it's alkaline or lithium, they just need to know that it's going to work. And so if they've adopted this technology, then that proves that it's reliable, I think. Yeah, Gino, that's a great point. When we, um, you know, we're talking about the Axiant system with customers, I mean, you're talking about people who, you know, really cannot tolerate any risk of failure. I mean, that's why they're, you know, the Axiom customer, that's why they're hired to do the the types of high profile jobs that they do. And so, um, you know, they really challenged us to come up with a solution that um, would make them confident in it and that would, you know, would deliver. And that that's really where we started with rechargeable batteries and the, the feature set and the technology um, all started there. Great. And let's look at the charging options for Axiom because they actually are pretty neat because we actually have a full a uh, 19 inch space rack mount charger the AXT 900 for charging those those batteries and uh, actually when you buy this it's a um, it it's really just a, um, a an empty shell that you slot in the charging options that you need so you can buy modules for either two handhelds or two body packs or like you see it configured here they've got two each of the handheld and two each of the body pack modules but you could you could make that be whatever you need it to be and all of those battery parameters that we've been talking about like health and cycle count as well as temperature and other things are available right in the LCD display there or because it's a networkable device like everything else in the Axiant lineup um, you can connect it to your Axiant network and if you're running our wireless workbench 6 software you can actually view those battery parameters remotely in your software so it, it definitely, definitely gives you the most visibility to what's going on charge-wise. And we now have a new accessory called the SBC-AX, which will slot into the AXT900 and allow you to charge the SB900 batteries in the Axiant rack charging unit. This is particularly of interest to people who may be using a combination of Axiant and, say, the PSM1000, which I think is a combination mm -hmm. that goes well together on touring applications. And with one style of rack charger now you can charge any of the different types of batteries that you might need we do have some portable options as well if you're not interested in going the full rack mount um, style charger there the axt 903 or axt 904 just use a lump in the line power supply to just get two batteries charged up you don't get visibility to all the parameters and it's not networkable but again if you just want something you can just toss in your bag and take with you to charge up the axiant batteries that option is there as well. And um, mentioned earlier that we now have rechargeability options for people in the conferencing market too, which could apply to ULXD and uh, systems that may get used in conference rooms. But here's something that's um, uh, a little bit more specifically designed for the conference environment. It's a new system that we've got called uh, Microflex Wireless, which is uh, we'll be shipping sometime later on in the summer. But if you happen to be coming to the Infocom show, um, you can stop by the Sure booth and learn more about the Microflex Wireless solution. But Eric, correct me if I'm wrong. This is again another adaptation of the similar lithium ion technology. Is that correct? Yes, it is. It's a. We're really excited about the the Microflex wireless system, and it uses the same rechargeable battery technology that we've been talking about the whole time. So it has the lithium ion chemistry, the embedded circuitry, uh, and it reports you know its health and its runtime and hours and minutes all through a uh, really convenient um, 
web browser based uh, software user interface. Wow, that's great. And I'll note you see the, the, the different transmitter style sitting in their docking charger there. So it's another docking chargeable solution. And the connector on those is also a USB connector. It's a, it's a full size USB connector. But again, that gives you um, actually a really great uh, potential backup option. If you do find yourself running low on battery life, you can actually just plug the transmitter into your computer's USB port and keep it going for a little bit longer um, as well as, again, that's what it's used to charge here. So, um, yes, that's that's yet another further adaptation. Um, I think, sure, it's safe to say pretty fully invested in rechargeability at this point um, and probably more to come even beyond this, I would think. Absolutely. Um, so speaking of that, this is usually the point in the webinar where we also talk about future webinars. I apologize, I don't have them listed on the slide here, but coming up in July, we will have a webinar on exactly that system we just talked about, Microflex Wireless. So when, if you want to learn more about that system, be sure to check back at sure.com slash training, or if you follow Sure on Facebook or Twitter or any of those places, we also post uh, links to the webinar registration there. So definitely be on the lookout for those. Uh, if you have any suggestions for webinars you'd like to see in the future, you can email training underscore us at sure.com. I apologize, it's hard to see the underscore there, but that's training underscore us. Uh, and you can always email our technical support team or give a call with any further questions that we don't get to today. But right now, I'm going to toss it back to Cheryl and see if we have any questions out there. We do indeed have a couple of good questions, not too many, but enough I think we can get to right quick here. Um, first question uh, about the rechargeable batteries. If you leave them in the charger, are you shortening the battery's life? Is that going to affect its charge cycles and its life cycle? Um, no, it's not. Actually, that's one of the functions that the circuitry in the battery fulfills. It makes sure that it doesn't um, overcharge. So you can go ahead and leave them in the battery as long as you want. And in fact, um, the Axiant system in particular, we designed to be able to be transported in the charger. So um, with that rack charger that Gino, Gino showed you, uh, the batteries lock into place in a very secure way. You can roll the rack off the truck, plug the rack in, and you don't have to you know, do anything else to have things uh, you know, charging right away in, in a touring application. And similarly, if you have the GLXD system and you decide to get that spare battery, you could always keep one stored in the receiver so you're never going to have a loose battery floating around in your gig bag. Yeah, that's we, correct. We know what a disaster that can be. <laughs> Um, all right, great. I'm going to um, add one thing to that before we go on to the next question, It just because it just triggered it, um, which is there There tends to be a lot of questions about sort of the care and handling of the batteries, you know, because uh, obviously you invest in the battery, you do want to make sure it's going to last you for a long time. And what I've found is particularly, I know we, we always talk about this when we do the Axion trainings too, is the only thing you really want to watch out for is don't store a fully drained battery for a long time. That's probably the worst thing you could do with these batteries is to use it up until the transmitter dies and then throw it on a shelf for three months. Because then when you pull it back out and try to charge it up again, you, you might have difficulty. You may not have killed it. It may be okay, but you may have some difficulty getting it to charge up again. And the, the Axiant charger actually has some, some smarts to be able to tell you if it's in that kind of situation or not. But in any case, um, it's, it's just a good idea that if, you're, if you know you're not going to use them for a long time, if it's just overnight, I don't care. But if you're not going to use it for a little while, charge the battery up and then store it. Don't drain it and store it. That's good advice. Um, speaking about those batteries and the, and the charge cycles, um, do we know how long the batteries last in terms of those cycles? Um, can they be recharged infinitely, or is there a point in time where they become unusable? So that's another question that we get quite often. It's a, it's a good question. Um, and, you know, typically, well, the thing is we've been trying to kill the batteries, and honestly, I mean, maybe the best answer is we haven't been able to kill them yet. Um, the, you know, the best estimates seem to say that a battery that's at about 80% health, right, it takes probably about 500 complete charge cycles to get it to 80% health. And remember, that's a complete complete cycle. When we keep track of cycle counts, we're not looking at just those times you top off the battery, but actually a complete discharge and recharge again. And so the estimate there is, yeah, 80% health, which maybe was still eight out of 10 hours if that was your fully charged battery, you know, that's 500 cycles. That's a lot of cycles. Um, we've got some Axion batteries that we've been trying to kill since I think before Axion started shipping. And even those are running uh, came off the top of my head. They're they're somewhere, they're somewhere over between four and five hundred cycles, and they're pretty much tracking with exactly what we would expect there. 
So, yeah, that that's worth pointing out that, like you said, the definition of a cycle. So if, you know, to your example of a battery with 10 hours of uh, capacity, if I um, use it for two hours and top it off, that's one fifth of a cycle. I'd have to do that five times for a cycle to actually register. So the circuitry in the battery um, does keep track of that. And uh, uh, it's not that you have to completely discharge it and recharge it to register a cycle, but if you, um, you know, use it and then recharge it up to an amount that would equal that of a full, you know, the full lifetime of the battery, that will then register as one cycle. Gotcha. So, it's okay. a cumulative effect. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. But the battery's smart enough to, uh, to keep track of that and kind of closely related to that as well. Um, people will often ask us and maybe they have already, and I'm just jumping the gun here, but well, he's like, well, how do I know when it's time to retire the battery? And that's one of the, the beautiful things about the statistics is that it's up to you to make that decision. Um, again, like, like I said earlier, you know, if a, if a full, if a fully charged battery or a brand new battery is 10 hours, even a battery at 50% health, and it's going to take a long time to run it down to 50% health would still give you five hours. So then it, you, you can decide, you know what, that's too risky for me. I don't want to use it and recycle it. I don't, don't want to say throw it away, but recycle the battery. Um, or, uh, you know, maybe that's still good enough for you. Um, but uh, other than that, you know, there's really no hard and fast rule as far as like, okay, this is the, this is the date and time when you should recharge this battery. It, it's it's going to be up to you. Great. Um, another question here. Are any of our receivers rechargeable? Um, the UR5 uh, is a, re a receiver that's a portable receiver that's designed primarily for um, camera usage. Um, that can take the uh, the SB900 rechargeable battery that we showed, um, so you can use it in that way. And that uh, that portable receiver is interesting in that it can also be powered um, via an Anton Bauer battery pack. We make a mounting accessory that clips on uh, very nicely to the back of an Anton Bauer battery and um, kind of uses uh, some contacts on the back of it to uh, to actually power it. Um, so that's an example of a receiver that that uh, runs off of rechargeable batteries. The other two would be the um, PSM 1000 and PSM 900 receivers um, that Gino mentioned. Those uh, those receivers run off the SB 900 as well. And I'll point out something along that line too that I wanted to mention earlier and forgot. Note that for the PSM 900, it's the P9RA, which is the newer version. We, when we first started shipping PSM 900, it included the P9R without the letter A that is not compatible with the SB900 battery. So uh, just keep that in mind. If you want to use the rechargeables with PSM900, you have to have the P9RA receiver. And that's clearly labeled on the front of it. And you can also tell because the P9RA has the little contacts on the back. Ah, so that's right. Yep. Just a little hint out there for all you PSM900 users. All right. Um, let's see. Got another question here. Um, are we planning on coming out with any more traditional AA or nine volt case styles and chargers for use with our stand with our other wireless systems like the SLX, the ULX, the new BLX system. Um, we're not planning to retrofit any of the existing wireless systems with um, rechargeability, but um, as much as the uh, lithium ion chemistry and circuitry management of the Sure solution uh, has a lot of advantages, all of our older products do work with standard um, off-the-shelf rechargeable batteries. So um, you can buy, you know, nickel metal hydride double A's to run with SLX or BLX, for example, and they should work just fine. And in fact, the newer uh, solutions um, actually do have a fairly long battery life. With those types of batteries, um, you want to be careful, if possible, to get a charger that um, charges them slowly. And you may even see some that are marketed towards uh, the professional audio community that, uh, you know, talk about not um, subjecting the batteries to conditions that would cause memory effect. Um, it's probably a good idea to look for something like that or else be, you know, real comfortable with um, you know, running your batteries all the way down before you fully charge them. So uh, the products that we have um, today that just work with double A's do work um, with off the shelf double A solutions. But to your question, we're not um, planning to retrofit those to use the um, intelligent lithium ion solution that we talked about today. Great. All right. I think that just about wraps up all the questions that we have. So I just want to say thank you to Eric for joining us today. Lots of great information. 
Um, if you have any other questions that we didn't get to or something pops up in your head, you can always send that to support at sure.com. And just want to say thanks for joining us and we will see you next time.